Today, I'm going to read to you the Bigfoot mystery. Let's look at what the blurb says. That tells us in a short sentence what the story is about. So it says, The magic key takes the children to a forest. What mystery animal do they meet? Mm -hmm. Mom was checking Kipper's trainers. Are these your toes at the end? She asked. Your feet have grown again. You need a new pair of trainers, said Mom. Go and tell Biff and Chip that we're going to the shops. As soon as Skipper peeked into Biff's room, the magic key started to glow. It was time for an adventure. The magic key took them to a forest with lots of tall trees. Biff saw a footprint in the mud. Look at this, she said. It's enormous! She put her own foot next to the footprint to compare. What made it? asked Skipper. A bear? Bears have paws with sharp claws, said Biff. This footprint has toe marks. Some people believe a mystery animal called Bigfoot lives in the woods, said Chip. Perhaps Bigfoot made the footprint, Chip added. Here is another mystery, said Skipper. Why is this rope here? Biff and Chip went to check. Suddenly, a big wooden cage dropped down over the three children. Oh no, shouted Chip. It's a trap. The children tried to lift up the cage, but it was much too heavy. Help, shouted Skipper. Is anybody there? Yes, said Biff. Look over there. A huge, hairy creature was watching them. It looked interested. That's Bigfoot, said Chip in amazement. Bigfoot came closer. I think he wants to help us, said Biff. The wooden cage was not heavy for Bigfoot. He lifted it off the children easily. We're free, said Chip. Biff looked up at Bigfoot. Thanks for helping us, she said. Bigfoot seemed to smile at the children. Suddenly, they heard gruff voices. The trap is this way, said a man. Bigfoot looked around. Now he seemed frightened. He ran into the woods and hid. A moment later, three men appeared. What are you children doing here? One of them asked. We're lost, said Chip quickly. My name is Mr. Buncombe, said the man. We set that trap to catch a mystery animal. Called Bigfoot. Bigfoot stayed hidden and watched. What will you do if you catch him? Biff asked Buncombe. Buncombe smiled. I'm going to take him all around the world in my travelling circus. People will pay lots of money to see him. He is the only Bigfoot in the world. Buncombe gave the children a hard stare. Have you seen Bigfoot near here? He asked. The children did not think Buncombe's plan sounded very nice for Bigfoot. Biff, Chip and Kipper looked at each other. They shook their heads. Chip quietly rubbed his foot over the footprint 
so the man would not see it. Maybe I'll go and look for the Loch Ness monster instead, Buncombe said crossly. The magic key began to glow. What's that? A magic key? shouted Buncombe. People will pay lots to see that. The children started disappearing. Come back! Buncombe shouted angrily. He did not know that Bigfoot was behind him, waving goodbye to the children. At home, Mum was waiting to take the bus shopping for new trainers. Go on then, Bigfoot, joked the to her little brother. Oh well, I think I would have been scared if I met this Bigfoot. Did you know that another name for Bigfoot is a Sasquatch? I would like you to read the words in the green boxes and then to also clap them. I'm, time, your, made, came, year, saw, very, Footprint. Travelling. Oh! People. Looked. Mister. Called. Asked. Anybody? Enormous. Goodbye. Loch. Now for a few questions. Why didn't Biff think it could be a bear's footprint? Think specifically what they said in the story. Why did Chip rub his foot over the footprint? And then lastly, why might Bigfoot want to hide in the woods? I would like you to now go and draw your own picture of what you think Bigfoot would look like. Or do you think there's any other mystery animals out there? Go write a sentence about it and also give your creature a name. Go through the story again. Look carefully at the pictures. Look at the expression on the children's faces. And think, what are they feeling and thinking? Look at the other animals you can see in the forest. I would also like you to go and read the story for yourself at least once or twice.